So hey, uh, I think this is the tradition to greet here in, in Sweden. Yeah, so a good uh, late uh, morning, afternoon, morning. Uh, my name is Petra Traxl. I'm the director of the public, in service, uh, public employment service of Vienna. But I will give you an overview of what we are doing in Austria. So our, what I like to start with is just to give you some uh, pictures on the Austrian labour market because I do think to understand what are our challenges in integration of refugees is really in combination with our labour market and the challenges on the Austrian labour market. And then I will give you some ideas what we think what our challenges are in the integration of refugees in relation to the role of the public employment service. So when we are looking uh, on the Austrian labour market, we really can see that we have, uh, let's say, this uh, after the crisis of 2008, we really have uh, not a high growth in the economic, uh, uh, yeah, in the in the economic. So we really challenge that uh, the actual situation in Austria is the growth is not so high that. Uh, it could give enough work for those people uh, which are coming to Austria and which are living in Austria. That's a very difficult situation for our country at the moment. We see on the other hand that we have um, a huge uh, labour market supply uh, and that in relation with uh, our neighbouring countries. So in the last five years a lot of persons from Hungary uh, uh, Slovakian Republic, Czech Republic, Romania, Bulgaria are coming to Austria for work and we have to integrate them in our working system and so we see that there are a lot of people are now living in Austria with a migration background uh, and so we have a really huge labour supply in relation to the jobs we can offer. We see on the labour market that the jobs, the new jobs, are mainly jobs, uh, part-time jobs. So we can see that we really create a lot of new jobs. But what we see is that there is splitting in jobs. So people, we have more persons uh, employed in Austria in the last years. But what we also see is that we have more persons employed in part-time work. And the last point, which uh, uh, is a severe point for us is that we had uh, um, in the last 10 years we, all, we always had been uh, yeah, beside Germany, one of those countries having a low rate of low unemployment rate and we are seeing that we have an increasing rate uh, of unemployment which really bothers us a lot. So when you see on the, on the chart here, you see uh, that we have the share of people are employed in Austria with a migration background is, uh, had been in rising from 30% to 18% in, in 2015, 2015. And also the rate of persons with a migration background in the unemployment rate increases from 18% to 27%. Yeah? So you see we have a lot of persons are in the working area and also in the unemployed uh, um, uh, unemployment rate, which have a migration background. Mostly of them had, what I already mentioned normally, this uh, migration background of people coming from Turkey, Serbia, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungarian people. And now the new uh, asylum seekers people coming here along also. So you see uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, increasing rate and that doesn't make it really easy to integrate now the new uh, refugees coming in Austria. So what we also see, and that's a little bit in relation to what you, Mr. Scapetta already has mentioned, the question of uh, uh, who is easy to integrate, we see in the Austrian employment uh, rate that people who don't have an education yeah, in Austria, uh, they are, are mostly uh, feared to be unemployed because it's very uh, difficult and we see the unemployment rate for persons who just have compulsory schooling. Yeah? So they have the highest unemployment rate in relation to people having a university degree or having an apprenticeship, uh, uh, having been involved in the apprenticeship system. 
So in relation for us, it's also that I like to, to show you, and the Austrian Public Employment Service didn't get as lot uh, as uh, yeah, a lot of more personnel than the German Bundesagentur. We have to handle yeah the figures uh, with a stable uh, manpower in the Public Employment Service. We have got 250 new uh, employees in the last uh, six years, and you see that we have to handle, let's say, double of uh, traineeship programs. We have to handle double of for effective persons in unemployment, uh, so and we have to give them help and subsidies to give them training program. And here you see the line that uh, nearly around 500,000 persons had been involved in training programs uh, in the last years. Yeah, so that's just an overall picture of what are our topics overall in Austria. So coming now to the integration of refugees and the role of the Public Employment Service. Yeah, you already have heard that we are one of those countries where a lot of people came in our country. So when we are talking uh, now of the registered or recognized refugees with a status, you have to see that's an increasing, yeah, an increasing number. Uh, but I also have to mention that we have refugees with, which are already uh, in Austria for 10 years. When I when we are discussing of uh, recognized refugees, we have to see that more than 10,000 of those persons are Chechenian people, Russian people, yeah? and we see what kind of mistakes we make in the last 10 years, because we hadn't been very successful in integrating them in the labor market. Yeah? So, and the, the, the other number, the increasing number, will show you the number of new refugees coming to Austria. So we really have to see there are old refugees already living here for more than 10 years, and now uh, we have the new refugees, our, our um, Syrian people, Arabic people coming to Austria. So when you have a look on uh, yeah, the actual period, then you see it's an, it's an upgoing, increasing line where people came to the public employment service. It's just the recognized site. It's not the asylum seeker site. It's the recognized people. When we see how many persons come to the public employment service, Vienna, it's just in Vienna. Yeah, we are always around the third. Uh, monthly coming to the Austrian Public Employment Service because they already have got the status. So at the moment it's around seven to nine hundred, yeah. And for us, and that's one of the challenges I will mention, it's very difficult to know how many people are now coming to us because we don't have a combined system with the asylum seekers uh, system. So we know how many people are now in Austria. We know how many asylum seekers we have, but we don't really. We are not able to plan how many people are coming to the public employment service and for how many people we have to plan measures. That makes it sometimes difficult. So, and who is coming? I do think it's nearly the same what you see all over, uh, all over Austria. Uh, so you see uh, most of the people, of the recognized people, are coming to Vienna. So we also always say two-thirds of the recognized refugees are going in the central area of Austria. Yeah? Vienna is the biggest city, so they are going to the central area, and the rest is staying in the countries. So it's a difference when people, yeah, what we see is that we have a kind of system, same like Germany, when you are an asylum seeker, you can't, you are not able to choose where to go, you go, you're coming to a certain area in Austria, but when people get the status of the refugees, then on the next day they are taking the train to Vienna, what we see. Yeah? So one day in Salzburg they got uh, their, uh, their status, on the next day they take the train and uh, they are coming to Vienna and be part of uh, the Viennese population. So you see that on the Austrian map, that uh, when we are talking about the, the people, the refugees, uh, who really have the status, we really see the concentration on Vienna. Two-thirds of them are living in Vienna. Then we see a little bit of concentration in Vorarlberg, which is here on the border to Switzerland. There is a, a community there. Yeah, we see some areas in Upper Austria and, uh, in Upper Austria and in Tyrol where people are living, but in the rest of Austria, to be serious, there are not really a lot of asylum seekers. So it's also a challenge for the organization that we really have to focus uh, on the, on the uh, labor market measures in Vienna. Yeah, 
So what we are seeing, what our challenge is. Yeah, we think our challenges in Austria are really to create a kind of standardized system, information transfer system between the asylum seekers and the state uh, and the recognized refugees. Yeah, so to, uh, we already have heard that from the OECD and we hope that we are starting uh, from October on a new system where we really do more with the asylum seekers. Because in the last two years for the new refugees, we really have to say in Austria, people had been waiting. Yeah, The process has uh, due for six to nine, 12 months. Yeah, They didn't learn German. Nobody asked what they have done. Yeah, They had not been allowed to work uh, just in very small areas, uh, agricultural uh, jobs, but uh, more or less they are not allowed to work. Yeah? So we have to start now uh, that peep that we are, let's say, starting in the asylum seekers period with uh, German courses, with recognition of our, uh, skills, with uh, training, some kind of trainings, so that this period, period of time is really used, yeah? because otherwise it's getting more difficult for persons in the integration. Yeah, we have uh, to create, or we have created a standardized integration pathway. I do think it's maybe a little bit similar to what you already said. I have charts here, what we are doing in, 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 in labor market measures, what we're thinking in uh, learning the, the language, in a competence check, in yeah, different uh, measures what we can offer to these uh, persons. Uh, I already have mentioned that I do think the challenge is really to start as early as possible. And that's not easy uh, in relation to a political discussion, because what we are discussing is if we start early, isn't that the pushing factor? Yeah? When we start early with the integration process, isn't that the pushing factor that people want to come to Austria? Yeah? So shouldn't we do something? Shouldn't we... Shouldn't we do something? So that's the, let's say, difficult uh, political discussion. And as uh, a public employment service, we are standing behind because we are on the side saying it's good to start as early as possible. Yeah? But I do think it's necessary, and that's the challenge, to have really a political uh, statement to do that. Yeah, I do think it's necessary really uh, to have tailor-made our, our labor market uh, programs in relation uh, to the skills what people are bringing already to Austria. So, uh, but you already have, Mr. Scapetta has already mentioned that, uh, that we have to have speci specific programs for high qualified persons. And I already have mentioned that we see it's di also difficult to integrate them in Austria. Yeah, because when I'm thinking on the health sector in Austria, it's regulated. Yeah, so a doctor is not able to work in the f in a hospital field because he also needs for the low qualified jobs the qualification. Yeah, so it's really, uh, let's say, impossible to integrate this <coughs> in their sector. So we have to set up specific programs for high qualified people and we have to set up specific programs for low qualified people. And that's the challenge for us to be really tailor-made, more or less. Yeah? For us, it's also a challenge to have uh, the budget and the staff. We have got in the last, for the last year or for this year now a higher budget for the integration of uh, the refugees. But we didn't, I hope now we get in the, next, uh, in the next days the information that we will get more personnel, yeah, more staff. Uh, because in the last two years we didn't get any staff for that work. And that's also a huge challenge because we all that our uh, council is at the public, regional public employment service need more time with these people because they are not able to speak the language, so how to communicate. And so we hope nowadays that we got 400 more staff for the public, uh, for the public employment services. We will see. What I already have mentioned is a huge challenge in Austria is also these regional differences. We are looking to Germany to the oblig obligatory residency. I do think it's the, the correct English word for that. So we are interested how you will handle that. Yeah, because uh, we also had started the discussion if that doesn't make sense. Also, we know it's difficult that you shouldn't that you shouldn't uh, set 
uh, refugees in areas where there is no work, but housing. Yeah? But we also see at the moment, if two-thirds of these refugees are in Vienna, we have now to handle programs where people are going back. Yeah? So we have now a program where young people delay age of 25 yeah, should go back to areas where they have apprenticeship places in companies. And it's, uh, believe me, it's really difficult if persons have been in the area, then go to Vienna and then convince them to go back. Yeah, because they have their friends now in Vienna, they have their uh, social surrounding in Vienna, and then uh, convince them, say, it's good to go to Salzburg, to Kärnten, uh, or anywhere in the region to Austria, yeah, and start there uh, your job, yeah, which is offering to you. It's not so easy. Yeah? So we see that this makes, uh, and in relation to those, uh, let's say, concentration in Vienna, it's also a challenge for our system in Vienna in relation for housing, school system, because what we see is that housing and school system would be more easy to handle in the regions than in the city of Vienna. Yeah, we have also a discussion about the benefits. Yeah, so our nine Bundesländer are not, uh, let's say, on the same level what the refugees should get. We have a common system in Austria with the uh, so, uh, yeah, Austrian social security system. We say Bedarfsorientierte Mindestsicherung. So that's a kind of social security system where people get uh, money when they don't have the right to get an unemployment benefit. It's the same for Austrian and for, uh, for the refugees. Uh, and we have a large discussion uh, if it should the same or if it should uh, less. Yeah? And now we have really the problem that some countries uh, like Vienna, we handle the people on the same level. Yeah, you will get as a refugee the same benefit, social benefit, than an Austrian person. But we already have countries where they pay less. And that makes it also difficult for us to say we bring someone to another uh, Bundesland, yeah, to another region, because people will ask uh, us, why shouldn't I stay in Vienna? Here I get the money, there I don't get the money. So it's a, let's say, a hard political discussion, what's the best, uh, let's say, in, 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 in giving subsidy and a benefit system for the refugees. Yeah, and we have the la uh, also a challenge, the last I want to mention is uh, the discussion about the rights and the, du and the duties. You also have managed it uh, to say what uh, kind of the transfer of values. Uh, so we see that uh, for the Austrian uh, society, yeah, also in the city, but also on the countryside, it's really let's say, a, a big discussion about the values. So it's the value, gender values, yeah, the values of, of re, the question of religion. So we really, uh, let's say, have the challenge within the public employment service also to be part of that system where we have to discuss with uh, these newcoming migrants about the rights and their values here in that country to get integrated in our labor market system. Thank you. Thank you. So. It seems more and more that the challenges are quite like, but the context and the <clears throat> systems are different. <laughs>